Hello, and welcome to my channel. If you're someone who is an art enthusiast, I'm sure you saw when the gouache craze happened, and everybody, especially on TikTok, were all painting in gouache. Despite seeing this craze myself, I somehow managed to miss actually purchasing any gouache paints during this time, but I still could never get the beautiful paintings out of my head with all of the, the richness that came from using gouache. So on the principle that it's better late than never, I'm going to be testing out gouache for the first time today. And the set I'm using is definitely on the beginner end. It's uh, definitely more affordable. So I'll go ahead and give you guys not only my thoughts on gouache in general, but just in case anyone else is also interested in trying out this new medium, I will go ahead and give you my thoughts on this specific set to see if it's something that anyone else should be interested in. But before I'm able to get into going ahead and using the gouache, I need to treat the pages in this sketchbook with gesso to make sure that the paint isn't going to seep through. This is my cheaper rough draft sketchbook I'm using just to test out the gouache paints, which is why I'm having to treat the pages. I could technically go straight into my actual painting sketchbook, but I didn't really want to use it for test swatches since it is nicer quality paper and especially now that I know they're no longer selling it, that thing is practically made of gold. I did just recently discover a tip from another artist where they actually mix acrylic colors in with their gesso so that they can put down a nice base coat at the same time as they're gessoing their pages. But I didn't think that would be a good idea here since what I really wanted was to be able to do a basic test of the new gouache paints to check out their color, their opacity, and how nice and easy they were to blend out. I needed a pure white background, so even though it made me sad, we did in fact just go with the regular gesso for this. Boring, I know, but don't worry, you will be seeing me mix bright pops of color into my gesso paint very, very soon, I can guarantee it. And just in case anyone is curious about it, gesso is spelled with a G but said with a J. Go figure. This gouache set includes 12 different colors, which is actually a pretty good balance for getting started and being able to test the medium in general. And yes, I did struggle just a little bit to get them out of the package, but that was a user issue, not a packaging issue. Hmm, shiny. So I don't know about anyone else, but a lot of the pretty art I was seeing coming from people using gouache was plant-based, so a lot of different, you know, foliages and trees and things like that. So I had a lot of green on the mind and decided to go ahead and start with the greens for my tests. The first green I put down is the pale green, which is going to be our warm tone green. And second is viridian, which is our cool tone green. I want to start by testing the opacity of these paints. So the first section I put on, I make sure to use a minimum of water and I'm pretty much just putting this on as it comes out of the tube. I mix in a little bit of water to start seeing how easy it is to blend out and I continue adding water to see how close it gets to a true watercolor opacity. And this is off to a good start. The pale green went down pretty nice and opaque and was easy to blend out into a more see-through traditional watercolor look. The viridian went in just slightly less opaque, but I think part of that is because I added a little bit too much water to my brush. And then it does blend out very nicely into honestly a beautifully toned watercolor. Next is Prussian Blue, which is going to be our cool tone blue in this set. And then following that is the Cerulean Blue, which is our lighter warm tone blue. So the Prussian Blue goes on definitely opaque, which is not surprising considering that it is a very dark color. 
And of course, I'm really enjoying painting this because blue is absolutely my favorite color. Every tone doesn't matter. I love every blue. And then going in with the cerulean again, this definitely was able to go in pretty opaque. And as I continue to add more water, it does blend out to look like a traditional watercolor. Next up, we have the purple, which there is only one purple in this set and it is a cool tone. So that's a little bit of an issue, but not too difficult to work around. And following that is the Burnt Sienna, which is our brown. So again, we're getting good opacity out of the dark colors, which is not surprising, but the real challenge is seeing how well it lightens and brightens. And at this point, I'm becoming absolutely stunned because it does lighten up very easily with just a little bit of water added. Next is Burnt Sienna, which I need to start playing around with a lot more. I know there's a lot of people, especially in the oil painting world, that begin every painting with a base layer of Burnt Sienna to give more color and character underneath their paintings. And this one I don't feel like lightened up into the watercolor quite as much, but it definitely did get good opacity. And I'm just going through the set in the order starting from the greens. So next I'm putting in our Lamp Black, which is the single black shade in the set, and then our Titanium White, so again, only white in the set. Black, no one surprised, I'm sure, that it was very opaque going down. And as I continued adding water to my painting palette, I was hoping to get more of a gray. It did definitely lighten up, but not as much as I was hoping slash expecting it to. And as anyone who has owned a white crayon or a white pencil knows, the problem with white is always that it's not opaque. So I wanted to test it on a colored piece of paper to test out the opaqueness properly, because you know that's really difficult to see on a white background. It wasn't quite as opaque as I was hoping it would be, but it does blend out well and it at least shows up, which I was actually pleasantly surprised by. Next is Lemon Yellow, and if nothing else, I don't know why, but the name Lemon Yellow makes me kind of happy. And this is another instance where I was absolutely shocked because the yellow actually went down with good opacity. And that's just not normal for yellows. And it did also blend out into the watercolor very nicely. And adding in our yellow ochre, which to me has always been closer to a brown than any of the other colors, if I'm being honest. This is another one that went down with good opacity, and as I added water, blended out very easily. And it's important to remember that watercolor is the type of painting I'm the least experienced with, so especially the colors that were very easy to lighten with just a touch of water and were easy to control that way. I was very pleasantly surprised because that is not my area of expertise. Second to last on our color set, we have Vermilion, which is somewhere between an orange and a red. And it goes down very opaque, it doesn't lighten up quite as much as I would hope it to. And then we have our Crimson Red, which I really like the tone of this. This is a nice red, and it does go down very opaque and lightens very easily into our watercolor. Now that I've gotten a general idea of how each of these paints works, just laying them onto a page with no particular design, it's time to go ahead and test these out doing an actual painting. So as usual, the first step is for me to protect the sides of the pages behind by covering them with plastic. 
because I tend to turn into a crazy woman with no self-control once I start painting. In order to limit the variables in this, since I'm already working with an unfamiliar medium, I wanted to make sure that I was painting something I was already pretty familiar and comfortable with. So after some thought and looking at what other people have used gouache for, I decided to go ahead and do just a general seascape. Since painting water is something I've done both with oil paints and with acrylics, and I feel pretty comfortable working with this subject. And to get the painting started, I'm going to put in my first layer of paint just as a light wash so that I can test out the buildability of the gouache as I go. And I will say putting in this wash was incredibly easy. I was very pleased. Once we've given our base layer time to dry, we're gonna go ahead and start building in more of our detail sections. So here I'm starting with what's the sky, and I am using an angled edge brush for pretty much this entire process. Since I tend to find them the easiest to put in both flat fill-in sections as well as doing details, they're my pretty much my go-to brush anytime I'm painting. I am using a reference to do this painting just to make the process a little bit easier. And the reference does have a bit more of a moody dark sky, which is why we've got the black edge up at the top. And now that I have the first base layer down for my sky, I'm going to start with the under layer of shadows that's going to sit beneath where the crest of the wave shows the difference between the sky and the sea. For anyone who's still very new to the painting process, you do always want to work in your darks first and your lights last. Highlights are always last because you really want them to sit on top. Now that being said, yes, that is a rule, but to be fair, a lot of the famous painters made their name by breaking rules. So if that's not what you do as a painter, don't feel upset, keep doing your thing. No one gets to judge you. And part of what you may have noticed is I'm actually using our two tones of blue to separate out my sky and my sea. So the blue of the sky, I'm mostly working with our cerulean blue so that it's a little bit more of a warm tone sky color. And I'm using Prussian blue, just watered down in order to do most all of the blue in the ocean. And again, continuing to add in our shadows first. So here I'm using a sideways motion of the brush to put in our rippling shadows that are gonna sit underneath the foam and crests of the waves. I'm adding in small touches of the lamp black with my blue in order to get the areas that have darker shadow to them. You do really want to be really careful when mixing in black since it does take over your colors pretty quickly. But these paints were actually really easy to just barely tint up and down with the black paint in order to get the shadows. I let that layer dry because as we all know, half of being a good painter is knowing when to just be patient in between layers. And next I'm going to start adding in some of our interest where we actually have a little bit more green tones within the waves. I noticed from my reference that the greens mostly seem focused in areas where there's a lot of foam on top of the water. So I'm trying to make sure I'm staying aware of that and adding in the light wash of green in areas that are going to have a lot of the foam. And I was careful to use the Viridian for this since it is our cool tone green. Whenever you mix a cool tone with a warm tone, you do run the risk of it muddying the colors a little bit, which is just something to stay aware of when you're layering paints. And here we have a bit of a rinse and repeat. One thing that was really nice is I did have to let my painting dry again after I added in the greens. And by this point, I'd also dried out the paints on my palette a bit. I'm pretty used to this happening with my acrylics since it sometimes is just unavoidable. And normally what happens is you have to scrape off the palette and start again because acrylics, if you try to add more water to them, 
they're just gonna get kind of clumpy and you're not gonna get a good consistency in the leftover paint. But with the gouache, I was actually able to add water to my dried paint and bring it back to life very easily multiple times as I went through the painting process. And finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, or at least the moment I was waiting for, where I was able to start adding in highlights. Doing the highlights on a painting has always been my favorite part of the process. Partially just because it feels like that moment when the painting really starts to come together. And don't get me wrong, all the base layers of paint underneath are extremely important and you'll never be able to make a good painting if you don't focus on those and give them their appropriate amount of time. But once you're ready to start adding in highlights, that means that you're going to have something recognizable. And it just makes me happy to be to that point. Those of you with a sharp eye may notice that I'm also working in sections of dark at the same time as I'm doing my highlights, and yes, this is on purpose. Since the key to creating visual interest and focus is creating sections of high contrast, aka setting your lights next to your dark, I use the time that I'm putting in my highlights to recognize areas that need more contrast and to darken up the darks alongside my highlights so that I create areas of visual interest. I don't think this is a tip I really got from any other artist, so I don't know if it's quote unquote the way art is done, but it's the way I do my art, so take that as you will. By the time I got to my final layer of highlights, I had mixed quite a bit of blue into my white, so I needed to go ahead and put some new down. And I discovered that having pretty much no water on my brush let me get 100% pure opacity with the white. And man, I was shocked. Because the main reason that I prefer acrylics and oils over watercolors is that I really like heavy-handed highlights. I like being able to add in a good layer of white over the top to brighten up all of my painting. And the fact that the gouache let me do this, oh, just both thumbs up, big time. And those of you with a sharp eye in the audience may notice that I did actually switch up my brush. So for these final small details, I am using a fine tip detail brush to go ahead and put in the little circles. I don't actually know what they're called in water. If anyone does, go ahead and let me know in the comments, please. But the areas where the foam breaks out into that very specific pattern that I feel like is pretty recognizable for ocean water. With all of my areas as I'm adding in the highlights, I'm very careful to use a loose hand and keep my lines pretty broken up and inconsistent since that's the last thing you want when you're painting realistic foam and realistic details in nature. You don't want straight, thick lines. You really want to be able to have a little flexibility, some brokenness, and definitely jagged edges because nature does not use a ruler. And again, working back and forth between my lights and my darks, I'm building in my last few areas I had that needed a lot more shadow. And using the same technique where I'm putting almost no water on my brush, so I'm basically just painting in the gouache straight as it comes out of the tube. It's very opaque, and I'm loving the fact that I'm able to mix these two looks, having some areas watercolor, some areas more like acrylic. And here's the final result. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. And I am very happy with Watch as a Medium. I will be coming back. And this paint set worked out really well. It gave me a good variety of colors. I'm gonna give these a nine out of 10.